Connor, how you doing, man? I am doing wonderfully. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon right now. I love that. I love that. So this is not our first time chatting. No. Unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Um, unfortunately, we, we have already done this before. Um, yeah. the recording, the recording didn't work guys. So, mm. uh, Connor has offered to do this again, and I'm super appreciative of that. So I, I'm not going to sit here and try faking my surprise on but I mean, it's been a couple months, so who knows? Maybe you've added some new features and I will be surprised. We have. So maybe right. there'll be some genuine, sur- it'll be fun to watch you try to fake it too. So no, I'm, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so let's just dive right in. What is fin security? So fin security is a phishing simulation and security awareness training platform, but we're built only for MSPs. So we solve, uh, this is what I tell everyone whenever they hop on a call with me, we solve three really specific problems. One is the automation of onboarding and offboarding your clients into the platform, automation of the creation and management and orchestration and all of the reporting that needs to go on around the training and the phishing campaigns. And then most importantly, being an MSP only vendor. So a lot of you who are watching this, who are running an IT company or an MSP, you know that if you're working with a vendor that doesn't specifically work with MSPs, that can sometimes create some friction in the way you have to do things. So we're MSP only, which means we're not going to create that friction. We built not only our platform to work specifically for y'all's use cases, we built our business to work for y'all's use cases as well. So just don't create friction, save all your time. That's kind of what we've hoped to do and what we've done for our existing partners. Awesome. So... I'm going to switch spots with here, here in a moment. Um, with, with all of that said, you are not, I'm going to say a security expert. You're, you're not a, I used to run a successful MSP and I know exactly what MSPs want because of that. And now I'm going to make a new tool. Can you, can you kind of talk to people about your background? Sure. Uh, my background officially is actually uh, in math. And then I also was a real estate investor while I was in college. But uh, you brought up a really good point is what are we doing to make sure we are building and listening to the right groups of people to serve the MSP industry well? So what we did from the very beginning, me and my co-founder was surround ourselves with the highest quality MSP folk we could find. People like Wes Spencer and Tom Lawrence and Ray Orsini. I mean, I'm name dropping here because some of you have probably you've either seen them somewhere or you know of them kind of names yeah and um they have been the people that have helped us really serve the msp community uh completely and just to give you one example from earlier today uh we learned from wes and and aaron the co-founders of perch security that msp user calls that we should be running like a town hall every two weeks with just msps are the most effective way to actually build the right stuff and to solve the right pain points for MSPs. Every two weeks, without fail, we hop on a call with about eight or nine MSPs, large and small, everywhere in between, and we tell them, this is what we're going to build, this is why we want to build it, and then they give us the feedback, they tell us where things might go wrong, and they've helped, that, you know, that group of MSPs has helped direct our platform for the last 18 months. So I would say, you know, we're super bright and we're super intelligent We'll build everything right the first time always, but the reality is we put it in front of MSPs that are doing great work and say, would this work for you? Would this solve the pain that you want us to? And that's how we decide what to build. That's why we're an expert in this area is because we've lent, we borrowed the credibility and the expertise of the experts. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I also want to, uh, just talk about the other elephant in the room, um, her- are you living in your mom's house right now? No, not at all. Like you're, you look like you're <laughs> in your bedroom at your mom's house. What's going on here? No, 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 no. Um, I did start this company in my parents' basement a few years ago, like three or four years ago. However, no, me, my co-founder and our first employee, we all rent together. So I am in my bedroom in that house. And actually our developers, uh, are right downstairs at the dining room table, kind of like Facebook house, uh, when they first got started. 
So that, that brings up an excellent point. Your developers and where, where are you? Delaware, Delaware. Oh, even better. So you, you don't have that crazy LA traffic or San Francisco traffic or anything like that. So you, your, your founders, uh, or the founders of your business, you and your partner, um, and your developers are all in the same building in the United States. Are you yeah. outsourcing anything overseas? No, not at all. Okay. When we reach out because we need support, one of you guys are going to answer. Yes. <laughs> one of our developers will absolutely answer. Perfect. So that's fantastic. You guys have, um, you, you guys have, have done it the way that MSPs want it done where they're, they're speaking, you guys are speaking our language and um, you're, you're in our area and that's going to make us feel a little bit safer. I know yeah. it's just cybersecurity training, right? But who, who knows what can be an attack vector anymore? So if <laughs> well, you, no, you bring up a good point. And, um, one of the things we made sure from the very beginning is, uh, practice what we preach. So mm -hmm. we very early on launched mandatory MFA for every admin account in our platform. We've only had a one or two MSPs complain about it, but then we followed that up with this is best practice, take it or leave it. And then they just typically end up doing it with us. So, yeah. uh, yes, anything can be an attack vector, which is also why if you integrate, we'll, we'll go through some integrations. When you enable integrations with us, it's not blanket admin rights integrations that you see. It's here are the exact three permissions we're going to request in order to get this specific integration done whether it's from Microsoft or some other service. So it's like, don't just blanket give people admin access to your entire Azure tenant. Make sure that you're actually going through and selecting the role-based access they should have. Be very specific about it. We do that as well. I love that you're doing that. That That is great. That is what MSPs want to see. We want to see yeah. that you guys understand security needs to be you know, the, what is it? The least common denominator or yep. how, how, however you guys would describe it in the security world. But we know that that's what needs to happen. And I'm so sick of seeing all these platforms that say, yeah, just give us global admin to your PSA and RMM and everything will be great. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Me. Or, uh, you'll never find us on SSO.tax ever. <laughs> if you've ever been to that website, you'll never find us on that. <laughs> Good. Good. So let's, let's just dive in. You've got your screen shared already. Yep. So we're going to do a little demo of mm -hmm. fin security and again, I've already seen it, but I, I want to see it again because I want you guys to see it and I want you guys to get excited about this. Yeah. So, um, quickly take us through creating a company. Cause I, I know it's easy. Sure. Uh, I'll show you how easy it is. And we just created a new company. There we go. And now this is, I'm going to call it a wizard yep. where you're basically giving us a to-do list. Of, here's what it takes to, to set up things for your client. So, um, if you go into personalize i guess i should make my window bigger huh if you go to personalize um that will give us the ability to custom logo welcome emails whatever changes we want to make so that way it looks like um it's something that your clients administration leadership team uh, is kind of on board with um then yeah you can go through that and do it or you could leave it at Finn because maybe you want to brag that you're using this really awesome security platform. Correct. Although most decide to white label. One thing I will say is you can override it like you just saw in a client. But if you go to the branding in your partner portal, which mm -hmm. is where we just were, if you upload your partner information here, we will detect that automatically pull that into every new client you make by default. So, which is fantastic yeah. because now they're going to see your logo, your welcome email, and you only had to write it one time. Correct. So that's, that's a huge win. And then if you've got a client that's like, no, 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 I want this to have my logo, uh, you know, 
Sure. Whatever makes you happy, Mr. Client. Yep. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. And then, you know, you might not get that just from reading managed company admins, but you can keep the entire thing partner managed, i.e. just analysts and technicians and folks at your MSP. Mm -hmm. Or you can also add admins to the individual tenants themselves. So if you have a stakeholder at your client that likes to get involved or just wants to know what's going on above and beyond getting automated notifications, which we can talk about in a bit, you can add them here and they'll have access to just this tenant. And obviously they're going to have access to just their tenant, but does that mean, you know, they're an admin? So that means they can make changes to the program. Uh, they can review analytics. They can do everything that you can do just only for their tenant, right? Correct. Correct. Absolutely. All right. And then email settings, welcome emails, user management. Um, the email settings one I found to be really cool because, well, why don't you, do, why don't you explain it? Sure. Um, one of the largest problems that MSPs have told us about is managing the delivery of traffic through traditional email infrastructure, i.e. just sending through SMTP. And what that typically turned into was you set up your client. It works for a little bit. Somebody makes a change in the domain controller, the environment somewhere. Uh, email deliverability is a big problem in general, let alone when uh, people's performance, i.e. getting fished or not getting fished, is, starts to be tied to deliverability of that traffic. So we've created an integration with the Graph API, Microsoft Graph. You can do all types of traditional whitelisting with us. However, and I'll go through this right now, if you just wanted to guarantee we're not going to use SMTP infrastructure, we're just going to use the Graph API to send traffic, which doesn't solve every problem, but solves a lot of that. And again, here's, a, here's an example of the direct permissions we're going to request. We could talk about why we have these ones as well, if you'd like. Um, but basically, all you need to do to set up this whitelisting is to show up with an admin of the Azure tenant. Mm-hmm review the permissions we're requesting from Microsoft and then click accept. And I know I did so, that quick, but so read all emails is one of them, right? Correct. And, and the reason I'm going to make assumptions, I know you told me this before, Yeah, but I forgot. So read all emails. I assume you need that in order to make sure that the email is in the inbox. It's being read that type of stuff. So yes and no. Microsoft, the Graph API rather, there is no separate in uh, API endpoint for writing mail and reading mail. You okay. do read write, the read write mail at the same time. And That's so cool. it is. Uh, and so we had to request that because it's the only way to deliver the traffic to the inbox is through that API endpoint and getting the permissions for that. So when Microsoft gets it together and separates them, we will update and make sure, because we don't need to read the mail at all. We just need to deliver it. Um, but right now, there's no way to separate it. And the title of this could not make it more clear. You are bypassing the Microsoft spam filter. I assume this would also bypass like something like iron scales or... Yes. So we are rebranding this because it's a little unclear, but here's exactly how this would work. If you have a spam filter, iron mm -hmm. scales, proof point, barracuda, you know, insert any of the hundred that you could use. We bypass that spam filter immediately because we're not using SMTP architecture. We're just dropping in an inbox right away. What if their spam filter, like iron scales, for example, is also using graph API? So if you have an iron scales does this, but a lot of others don't. If you have a spam filter that goes back through already delivered emails, and looks at them and categorizes links and, and stuff like that, then there would need to be an additional whitelisting process for that spam filter. For most spam filters who just look at everything on the way in and classify it, we would fix that immediately. Good to know. And do you have documentation on how to do this with the ones that you know can cause problems? Yes, absolutely. And uh, Microsoft, I, I'll put this caveat here because my developers and I talked about it this morning and they told me I need to start saying these things. Um, <laughs> Microsoft just made changes to the to their advanced, trying to get the exact term, advanced delivery. So there is a setting you do have to update in Microsoft Defender for 365. 
even in addition to using our spam filter bypass. So it's still way simpler than whitelisting in general whitelisting, but now it's not just a click button, get email delivery. It's click button and update a setting. And you're Okay. And then I think that covers all the questions on the, the mail filtering part. Yeah. Uh, welcome emails. This is literally after you add users, it'll just welcome them to the program. So they are made aware that we're going to start this program. Correct. Um, two things I'd like to say about this. One, setting expectations is the easiest way to guarantee buy-in from employees. In my experience, after doing this for years and years and years with hundreds of MSP partners, setting expectations with the employees of your client up front are the easiest way to make sure this goes off without a hitch. Second, when you don't do this, you will get hundreds of support tickets, depending upon the size of your client, saying things like, what is this? Why do we have to do this? Uh, is this a phishing email? Are you sure it's not a phishing email? And it just creates fires that could have completely been avoided. We saw that happening in our partners. And then through that MSP advisory council that we talked about, we said, if we just made a way for you to automatically set an expectation, send out an email ahead of phishing and training, would that solve your problems? They said, absolutely. Let us craft it at the partner level, change it in the client if we'd like, and let it automatically send it to everybody before the, the campaign start. And since we've done that, we have yet to get a single support ticket sent to us from any of our partners about what is this and how how can we explain it. So it's just solved a lot of problems already. Cool. And you just turn it on like that. And when we go pull users in, they'll automatically be queued up. All right. User users. Users. That's pretty, you know, duh. Pretty simple. Uh, right now we have... Uh, Azure Active Directory integration. We're launching an Azure Gov integration today. For those of you who have any um, uh, DOD, DFARS regulated clients or anything like that, we'll have an, an Azure Gov integration. I won't say by the end of the day, by Monday at least, because uh, I used to write code. So uh, we actually got made fun of in our partner call today because they're like, what happened to read only Fridays? Why are you launching new code on Fridays? We're like, oh, come on. We just want to get it out there. But uh we are launching one like right now. So that will exist. We're also planning on building a Google Workspace integration for also the delivery and the user sync. It's not in the platform yet. I don't have a timeline for it. That was your next question. But it will be uh it, it will be either next on the list or shortly thereafter. Cool. And we've made it real simple to do right here. You just sync with Azure. These are the permissions we should be requesting. And okay. then when you continue to Microsoft. You can verify, again, show up at the admin of the tenant. Yep, those are the three permissions we told you we were requesting. Click accept. And now what this is going to do is this is going to go to your tenant, pull over all of your users and groups, and it's going to set up an automated process that will run every six hours from here until you disconnect this. We're going to pull over new users. We're going to delete um, deleted users, and we're going to update existing users if you've made updates to that user automatically. Our whole goal is that whatever your source of truth is, if it's your PSA, if it's PAX 8 and you're buying all of your software through that, if it's your Azure tenant, make the update there, have that be your source of truth, and we will update automatically. Don't come to our platform and have to do anything. Cool. Yep. And so we got our users here. We got our groups here. Big question I get, and some of your uh, listeners are definitely asking it right now, is what do we do with shared mailboxes? Are we going to have to pay for those? No, not at all. So pretend that a security ops at maybe Pin Security was a, a shared mailbox. You have a great button called Sleep. Now this user is going to get ignored. So they're still going to be pulled into the platform, but they're not going to get enrolled in training or phishing or anything. And mm. they're not going to show up in billing. And they'll stay slept. So until you come unsleep them, this user, for all intents and purposes, will be completely ignored. I like it. Click Commit. And as soon as this little spinner is done, we can go to the users page and we can check that I haven't lied to you the entire time. And that we, in fact, do have users and groups in our platform. And what happens if you lied to us the entire time? Uh, people lose trust in me. <laughs> right. And our platform doesn't work. Fair. 
Uh, so here it is. Uh, you can see I have my one user that slept. I have my two others that haven't been welcomed yet, but uh, we queued up the welcome emails. So they'll show up at noon tomorrow. Um, and we have our groups. We ignored one of them. So we only have one other group here. Great. So that is users. Now, if you want to think about what we've done so far, Steve, it's all but setting the training and fishing up. And what we've already done is we've cut what is usually several hours worth of work out of getting fishing and training running in a, in a client. That's what we do. And I have been talking my mouth off the entire time and it's taken us less than, or we, we've been here for 20 minutes, taking us less than 15 minutes to start getting through this demo. Mm -hmm. So this is, our goal is literally within 15 minutes, set up your client forever. Reports are automated out. Fishing and training will run itself continuously from here on out. Get everything handled and don't come to the platform again unless you want to. You shouldn't have. So, so let's talk about that continuous training thing. Because, you know, every time I sign up for one of these uh, cybersecurity awareness training yeah. platforms, you know, I've got to go in and pick which uh, phishing email I want to send out and pick which training emails I want to send out and schedule uh, training video modules and all that. And it it's a lot. And I'm lazy, so I don't want to do all that work. So talk to me about your continuous campaign creator. So that exact use case you just mentioned, if you want to do that, you have all of the power to do that through our platform. Go to training dashboard, select the training, go to fishing dashboard, select the fishing. More power to you. And you know what? We'll even throw a cherry on top of that. If you create a campaign, you can share it as a campaign template to all of your clients. So hmm. if you do want to create one, I wouldn't ever recommend you do. But if you do, you can share it and only create it once. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, I do not believe the MSP's value is in selecting the phishing and the training that goes to users. Your job, and your value is creating a culture of security, a relationship that exudes safety uh, and expertise with your client. Your job is to leverage all of the tools you need to to make that happen. And if you're selecting the exact fishes and the exact training that goes to clients, I don't view that as the best use of your time. No. So it's not. I don't believe so. And I, I have yet to find an MSP that believes that, even though they all tell that to me when we first start talking is that's what they do. Um, currently. So what we've done is we've been doing this for an enormous amount of partners, enormous amount of their clients for years and years and years now. So we've created a continuous campaign that we call it, where what we're going to do together right here, Steve, is answer a set of questions. These questions are going to create a set of topics for phishing and a set of topics for training that mm -hmm. are all going to be based on what unique risks this client is exposed to as a result of their industry, how they work, their size, so on and so forth. And it's also going to be a list areas of compliance that they will need specific addressing on as a result of here. Do they need GDPR training because they do business in the European Union? Stuff like that. So what we're doing is we're going to build a set of, this set of topics. Ooh, typo. Remotely. That work yep. remotely. I'll, uh, I'll F11 and real quick fix that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a grammar Nazi. No, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, Somebody needs to say, be. I shouldn't say Nazi anymore. I shouldn't have ever said it. But grammar you know, critic. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And then, so basically what we're doing is we are crafting these topics under the hood as you answer these questions for every single client. And then at the end, what we're going to get to is the list of topics. So up at the top here, we have a list of fishing topics. Up at, down at the bottom here, we have a list of training topics. Now I can go show you what both campaigns end up looking like, but here's basically what's going to happen. For the fishing, we're going to select relevant fishes for the individuals based upon some of their previous behavior. So those are the allowed topics in all of our phishing emails that could be sent. So whenever this campaign runs, every month, every week, every quarter, whenever you want it to run automatically, we will go to the allowed templates. We'll look at the user's behavior and we'll say, yep, a giveaway fish is probably going to get them. 
let's fish them with this. So every user gets a different experience. No user gets the same fish at the same time of day ever, guaranteed. Very important. Can I make a quality of life improvement recommendation? Yeah, and I think, I think you gave the same quality of life improvement on the last time we talked, right? Yeah, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I would recommend graying out the question marks that we've already been to or changing their color somehow. Mm -hmm. And then making the one that we're currently on larger mm -hmm. so that way it stands out. So we know like you are here. Right. Yeah, that would be very helpful. We could also get way better at letting you add new questions. The stuff we're talking about haven't implemented. Sure. So I like that you have the ability for us to choose an industry. You included healthcare and you know, that type of stuff. So when we choose the industry and answer all of those questions, you actually have, I assume, built out a whole set of rules that basically says, if this is a yes, then you're going to include these types of trainings. And you might have even configured more complex, like if they answered yes to these three and their industry is this, then we need to prioritize these trainings. I'd have to go talk to my developers as to exactly how they did that, because this is what I've explained to them mm -hmm. is there are certain topics that apply to every company of every size, such as educational and social engineering. Mm -hmm. There are other topics that only apply to the way companies work, such as working remotely. And then there are other topics that only apply to companies who are, have to abide by specific regulations like PCI or GDPR or HIPAA. And so what I've done is I said, listen, here's the base layer that everyone should get. And that included things like phishing, passwords, social engineering, all of that stuff. And then depending upon how you answer questions, we'll add or subtract certain topics that were included as a result of assumptions we made at the beginning, but that you've clarified through the questionnaire. Okay. Now let's say I think it's really important that we, we kind of put a strong emphasis on HIPAA. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for me to prioritize that list that you've got somehow? Not today, but improvements that we are launching before the end of this year, you'll be able to edit this and add double up certain topics, rearrange the order of topics, and also lock modules in place specifically, not just a topic. So you can choose the exact training that goes out, still take advantage of all of the automation. Those are the improvements we're planning. Perfect. I really like that. For that exact reason. Is, um, if you want to think of what we've done is I've focused exclusively on automation. I've said, you know, automation has to be key here. If you have 20 clients and you're trying to manage 20 fishing campaigns and 20 training campaigns, that is a mess waiting for somebody to make a mistake. And it's going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. um, so we focused on, you know what, take that completely out of the partner's hands. Let's make it all automated. They'll configure things at the beginning, get their client really comfortable. And then boom, we're off to the races. It's handling itself. The next, the next thing that I would say would be awesome to see. I've got a, a few colleagues that they have really done a great job of focusing on like a niche. Um, yeah. so they, they said, you know, I'm going to be specifically healthcare IT. So it would be really cool if we could say, you know, I answered all these questions for client a, yeah. I've got these other 19 clients I need to add today. Yeah. Can I like use the answers and and all the customizations that I made in the future when you let us make those changes, can I turn that into a template so I can deploy that to all the new clients? You are speaking my language for the future that I see for Finn. Um, a wow. conversation I've already had is we've started to call that concept a company template mm -hmm. where you at your partner level, and this is something that we're building towards, so it's not something in the platform today, just so everyone listening is very clear. What we're building towards is 
okay, this is my healthcare company template. It'll have certain fishes, it'll have certain training, it'll have certain topics, it'll have certain policies that you can mm -hmm. upload and distribute through our platform. Whenever you get a new client, you're just going to say, connect this D, enable this spam filter bypass, apply this company template, go. And then it'll be done. That and then awesome. that's what we want to build toward. That is the peak of automation. What we're missing right now is just a little tiny bit of configurability. As you saw, the topics are kind of rigid, but the improvements mm -hmm. that we're making before the end of this year are going to get rid of that rigidity. And then we're going to be able to let you configure that in that, you know, overall template that you can apply to new companies. So yes, Wonderful. And that's the stuff that gets me excited because uh, we also have some other really cool plans. Maybe we can talk about at the end if you want for just building better uh, phishing and security awareness that actually measures users' behavior and changes it proactively. So I, we right. can talk about some of the stuff we're building in this year as well, but super exciting stuff. Now, is there anything else that we need to do for setting up a new company? Uh, schedule these out. They default to monthly, but you can change them if we went into the campaign. So I'll just submit and show you. Okay, we have five green check marks. So the very last thing that you should do, and not everyone does it, is add people as a report viewer. The most annoying thing is having to remember to go into one of your tools to download a report and then email that out to the right group of people. So what we allow you to do, it's real simple. You just add anyone that you would like here, any email address, pick on the monthly or the weekly reports. You can include historical data and you can include the people who need a little bit of extra care, love and care, TLC maybe. Uh, people who are getting fished and people who are not completing training is what users to watch meet. And I want to clarify for everyone that we are still, uh, everything on the, the left side in that menu, that is specific to our tenant. Yep. I'm sorry, to our client, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Because it says Rocket MSP with a space in between up there. And then is that a little back button next to yeah. it? Yeah. I named the client Rock and MSP. This is our. Oh, see, I wasn't even looking for bread. Okay. So breadcrumbs belong up in the top uh, left. I would have never seen those. I was yeah. looking at the top left. You see where it says testing MSP right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a little fin logo next to it. It is. But it's really hard to tell because it's so tiny. Um, so, so yes, this is per, per tenant. You can decide these rules and these reporting. Cool. Okay. And All right. Then you mentioned, um, are we done? That, that is it. If you want me to rapid fire, what's going to happen? Users are being pulled in now. Everything's going to be white labeled. They're going to get welcome to the program based upon what you've delivered them. All the traffic is guaranteed to be delivered through the whitelisting that we've set up. The training and phishing is going to run on a continuous basis, selecting content and the fishes from the relevant topics that that questionnaire identified without you needing to be here. And every month you're going to get a report on what training is going on, what phishing is going on, what's the performance like, and who are the people that I need to get in front of and start to have a conversation with because they're not performing. Awesome. All, and users get reminded automatically. They don't complete their training. You don't need to remind them. We email them every week if they have open training that they've been prescribed, but they don't. So let's let's preview some of this training. Sure. Because I I want to know what this looks like. You know, like, like we've got training stuff and then we've got phishing emails. Correct. So I will. This is an old uh, reminder of ours. So they don't look quite like this anymore. And all of this can be white labeled again for anyone watching or listening. So this will have your MSP's information or your client's information, your MSP's logo. Finn will show up nowhere other than right now. You do have to send it from reminder security. So okay, that's it. That's not the worst thing in the world. And you know what? We know it's going to get delivered because you've set up your SPF, DKIM, DMARC. Correct. All of that's right. Yes. Uh, we wouldn't be uh, an email company without setting up our email, right? <laughs> but, and my but point is, yeah. so many, you know, there are many MSPs that, um, how do I say this nicely? Suck uh, at, at email deliverability. And that's because sometimes they put that in the, 
marketing bucket. And so they don't really spend a lot of time trying to figure out how all that stuff works. Right. But at the end of the day, it's all DNS. Yep. So, I mean, it's, it's stuff that they need to know how to do and they probably know how to do it. They're just not doing it because they don't think about setting up all this deliverability DNS stuff. So yeah, I, I would love to see Finn implement the ability for us to use our own domain for these emails. But in order for you to do it right, you know, you're going to have to have a wizard or figure out how to integrate with our 365 and, and use graph API to send emails. Maybe that's an option. I don't know, but correct. Correct. Um, so for this training reminder, one thing we've done, we've created the shortest path to learning. This button here says log in. In reality, it's just a tokenized link and we're dropped right at our training. If a user had one course, it would just start playing for them right here in the browser and they'd be off to the races. So basically, uh, this is our training. You see my smiling face right here because you can upload your own content and deliver it like it's in a, uh, like it's in a campaign. The user normally would just scroll through, say, okay, I want to look at password security. We have multiple content providers that have um, animated, live action, Hollywood style production, all, all different types of content. And what we can guarantee is that no individual module will be more than five minutes of training, followed by a set of quiz questions, which you can see here are some quiz questions. Then when a user is complete, it would show up in their completed section. They can download a certificate of completion if they'd like. They could do whatever they want. All the analytics is all updated in real time. So if you went back to the dashboard, you'd start seeing completion. And of course, all the reports are updated for when they're. And that's it. Super, super simple. That's really great. Now, you said you've got content providers. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you got content providers? You don't just make your own content? Uh, no. We don't. So uh, a little secret. When I first started this company three or four years ago, I went and I met with many, many security awareness training companies. I think I ended up meeting with like 11 or 12. And I asked them, what do you think your unique value? Why should people work with you? There's another company down the street. All of them in unison basically said, our content's the differentiator. Our content's the reason people should work with us. Well, I've heard that seven times this week. So what makes your content 10 times as better as the other six people that have also said the same thing about you? Never really got a good answer. And I likened what I saw happening in the industry to what I experienced in college. So I studied math in college. Mm -hmm. I love math. I have a bunch of textbook, textbooks behind me, actually. And basically, I tried to talk to somebody about math, which I was really passionate about and really excited and interested in. The light would dim from their eyes. The conversation would be over. Their mother, their brother, whoever would be calling them from the next room. Their friend was trying to get in touch with them. Conversation over. With no interest. Oh, I, and, I think I hear someone calling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just like that, that, right? Yes. And uh, I saw the same thing happening with cybersecurity is at the end of the day, the people that need to take this training, they don't have an enormous interest in cybersecurity. What they do want is to show up, do a great job, be safe and be secure while they're doing it. And so I realized, you know, there's a bar that the content needs to get over for that to happen. But once you get over that bar, we're still in the realm of teaching people about things they're not, that don't get them up in the morning, which they're not going to want to keep watching unless mm -hmm. they have to. So I said, you know what? I can just buy everyone else's content that'll sell it to me. I'm not going to participate in just being another content provider that builds content that I'm going to fool myself into thinking is the reason people should work with us. And what I'm going to do is find a way to pair the best content that I have access to with how it's performing in a client. So where this is going is kind of like a meritocracy where if an MSP likes a specific provider, awesome, choose that provider for that client. Or if the MSP wants us to decide where we're going is we're going to look at the usage that clients have for the training how long they're watching videos, if they're completing training on a regular basis. And we're going to smartly suggest different modules as a result of what type, what style, and what feel of the content typically works best. So I see that the only reason we're able to do that is because we're committed to 
integrating everyone else's content, not building our own and pushing everyone else's out. So to simplify what I just heard, um, content creation is for the birds. You would rather give us great content that already exists because this is all about automation. So why wouldn't you automate your content by getting it somewhere else? Right. And you are going to, again, simplifying, check a report every month to see what content is the most delightful for the end users, the most, uh, the most used, watched, completed, uh, 100% and make your own educated decision based off, uh, these reports to then modify these continuous campaigns moving forward. And if that means eventually you guys stop paying for content from certain providers, because maybe it's not as, you know, useful or, or right. completed or whatever the metric is that you're looking at, then so be it. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Um, right now we have that data, but we're not adjusting which content providers go out. We're just making sure that the module and the topic are relevant to that client. And then, but we're absolutely building towards to exactly what you had just described. Perfect. It's Can we take a look at a uh, phishing email? Absolutely. So one thing we've done as well is uh, created a different learning concept that we call a learning moment. And what we're going to, what I'm about to show you, what we're trying to do is we are actively targeting users with vulnerabilities we believe them to, to have. And then we're going to teach them how our platform targeted them through the phishing assessments and tell them which habits they should build in order to recognize them moving forward. So it's very, very effective at changing behavior is kind of what we're going at. Now, here's a phishing email. This was sent to myself as a test. So in the while, it would have their real information. You can pull in first name, last name, supervisor, department info, and inject that into all the fishes or just let our platform do that for you. Additionally, these links aren't obfuscated, but in the while, we have, I think it's right now, 50 different link domains and another 25 sending domains that we tie to the content itself when we create this phishing template to make sure it's relevant and uh, to actual phishing content, if that makes sense. So we have built a phishing simulation engine that is very good and very high quality at actually providing things that look realistic. And the way we decide to make fishes is real simple. MSPs send us real legitimate emails and say, hey, we just got this. Can you turn it into one for us? And we'll just rip it in platform immediately. Hey. So here's a Zoom fish. This is an actual Zoom email, by the way. Zoom. It's a, hey, Zoom, if you're listening, it's 2022. Put some, uh, put some color on your emails. <laughs> and um, basically, when a user gets fished, Learning moment starts right away. This is accessible right here in any browser, on their phone, on their tablet, on their iPad, doesn't matter where. And what this is going to do is this is going to rip the entire email that we just fished this person with, or it works for text messages too, and we can talk about that. And we're going to teach them, okay, what was the vulnerability in here and how did we target? So this says, hey, can you hover over this link real quick? Make sure you hover over every link before you click them. Unsuspecting links can lead you to malicious places. You need to worry about that. This is one learning moment step is what we call it. And we have one more and it's the same thing. Hey, we added a second malicious link in here in the unsubscribe button. Make sure you hover over every link, not just the ones at the tops and the middles of emails are asking you to do things. And in this case, this user's done the learning moment. In another's, will draw attention to the from address. We'll say, hey, this is an example of domain impersonation. You thought this came from Zoom. This is why this is domain impersonation. Here's how you could recognize a real company next time. Uh, we'll draw attention to the reply to. Hey, did, did you see that the, the domains are different? It's a big red flag. If we're simulating spear phishing or business email compromise, we'll say, hey, did you walk down to their office or text them, call them or s Slack message them or Teams message? Did you verify that this person that we were impersonated actually needed you to do the thing that, that this email or this text message tells you, you should have done that. It should have created a, you know, 
warning warning bells and red flags should have gone up. So our goal here, Steve, is real simple. It's in 30 seconds, right when they fail, they know why they failed. They know how to prevent it in the future. And then we'll continue reassessing them on the points that they've now demonstrated they didn't recognize the first time. Wow, so I, I love this, man. You guys have built a platform that I think MSPs have needed for a long time. Yep. Is there anything else? Like, like your platform is so simple in, in the best way. You know yeah. what I mean? So is there anything else that we haven't talked about? Um, we have a full template editor if you'd like to build your own. But again, we are pushing MSPs towards your value is in leveraging us as a tool, not in yeah. selecting and creating the fishes and the trainings yourself. Um, we're building several new integrations. Uh, we are building, we have a policy section. It's pretty rudimentary right now. You can upload PDFs. You, users will have to attest that they've read them all and understood it. Stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. pretty rudimentary. So we're updating that as well. Um, and yeah, since the last time we've met, we've released a partner level API. So if you have a business insights tool, maybe it's cognition 360, maybe it's some power BI, whatever. You can now pull all of your clients' performance data out of our platform and into your business insights tool without us, without you needing to download anything. Oh, that's cool. And we just released a gradient integration as well. We're a part of their synthesized program. You use gradient for billing reconciliation. You can click a button and now you'll never have to reconcile billing in your PSI ever again for our tool. It's that simple. Do you have any planned integrations? Yes. Azure Gov is being released in the next, if it's not today, it'll be next week. Okay. We are building a Google Workspace integration that is slated for Q1 as of now. Uh, okay. And we are also building a, I believe, you know, I have to go talk to my dev team, make sure they haven't reprioritized things because uh, they have a lot of conversations with clients in terms of what's getting built and when. Uh, we're planning on potentially building a line guard integration. Again, business insights kind of tools, data warehouse stuff. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, that is it. Those are the only planned integrations as of now. Great. Oh, lifecycle insights. Okay. We're building a lifecycle insights integration as well. That's awesome, man. So you, you guys are, are really focusing on development right now, which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And I love it. So... How do people get signed up? Is there a trial? So there is no trial. However, we are quite possibly, I'd hope so. If you show me a company that's more transparent than us, I'd love to talk with them and learn how to be more transparent. We have a full demo. Every nook and cranny that we went over and some that we didn't even get to on our YouTube. You can actually access it through our website if you'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, uh, a do a demo. And we give NFR licenses to every client that signs up with us for your own internal use forever for free. No expectations involved. Fantastic. Um, and we have, we have a pricing form on our website. Get this. And actually, uh, I'd like to show you if you could yeah, share my screen with on it. If you go to pricing, it's real simple. You're not going to be enrolled in marketing emails. You don't need to sit through a demo. You can just watch one here. And you will not need to have a conversation with us to learn about pricing. You fill that out. We promise all of this and I will give you the pricing because I know that sometimes your partners are going to come across us when you're working with them as an MSP. I never wanted to cause any problems. So that is what we put here on our pricing page is just reach out. Now, since MSPs are the only people watching this, you're going to tell us what the pricing is though, right? Sure. Um, so pricing for y'all starts at $2 a license a month. And a license is real simple. It's, is there an end user receiving some kind of education from us? Okay. There is a 125 license minimum for mm -hmm. the partner. There are no tenant restrictions. There are no minimums per tenant. There are no additional fees. Everything that I just mentioned is all you can eat fishing, all you can eat training, all you can eat compliance, all you can eat support. It's everything's included. There's no setup fees, no nothing. And then, sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, I, I'm curious what your next statement was going to be. We have better pricing tiers for additional commitments. So if you wanted to commit to a 250 license minimum because you're 
slightly larger MSP. We can give you way better pricing. If you want to commit to a 500 license minimum, same thing. Um, we have a month to month agreement. If you wanted a discount, you'd have to commit to a year. But other than that, there are no commitments. We bill in arrear every month based on last month's usage. That's it. We make it real, real simple. All right. So 250 bucks to start. Yep. Is, is basically our minimum. Yep. And w there's a possibility we can get that for a little cheaper if we commit to a year. Yep. How, what are we looking at monthly if we commit to a year? 10% uh, off. Uh, okay. So no additional size commitment. 125 licenses at a year is 10% off. 250 licenses at a year is another 20% off, I believe. I'd have to go check exactly the percentages. It's another 20 cents off per license. Cool. Okay. It's, I mean, it's not an astronomical discount, but for the people that you know, maybe have hundreds or thousands of end users. Yeah. Um, it, it really does start to add up. Oh yeah. And $2 a seat isn't bad when you're looking at this as for, for $2 per end user, I don't have to do shit. Anything. <laughs> and, uh, I, I'd say that's worth it <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to give you some color commentary on, on our partners. Over 90% of our partners resell FIN uh, as their security awareness provider, right? They'll build a security awareness program between 3 and $4 a user a month. So most of our partners are getting very close to 100% margin. You hit the nail on the head at almost zero administrative cost. Yeah. And, and let's look at this a little more realistically. I would say that you as an MSP should be building out packages. So maybe you've got like your, your basic package of MSP support and, you know, you'll have your per user, per endpoint, yeah. per server and per site type stuff. And, you know, this should just be bundled into your per user stuff at the basic level. Yes. Okay. And at $2 a user, I mean, you're going to have this, you're going to have your 365 license and, you know, a, a couple other things, right? And you're going to charge 30 to $50 per user just at the user level, not even looking at the endpoints and everything else. Right. You're, you're going to have really great margin when, yep. when you build it out this way. Yeah. And uh, good news for MSPs, cyber insurance is doing all the selling for you right now for your clients. It really is. And that's the other thing, but uh, cyber insurance is something that you should be requiring your clients to have. Um, and you know, you, you're going to tell them, Hey, look, you, you have to have cyber insurance and you need to have these things in place that we want to put in place for you in yeah. order for cyber insurance to even accept you as a customer. Yep. And, um, I talk about that with West Spencer reverse at fifth wall a lot. There are five things. 99% of carriers are now requiring one of them is security awareness training. Now, what are the other four? Uh, it is MFA everywhere possible, segregated immutable backups, security awareness training. Um, oh my goodness. How am I forgetting the other two? Uh, next gen AV. So beyond just signature checking. And I believe the fifth one is some, M uh, some kind of MDR solution. Um, the first four, I know the fifth one, I'm kind of, I'd have to go talk with Wes to make sure I got the five, right? Cause he was the one that has been telling me this information. These are the five things that 99% of cyber insurance carriers require, require qualify for their possible policies. Right. I am putting that list into a post in the rocket MSP forum, which Connor, I need to get you into man. Send me an invite. I'll oh, really? show up and start, uh, saying some things. <laughs> right. Cool. Well, Hey, I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah. Um, when we're done recording, stick around for a minute, would you? Sure. Thank you uh, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like what you've seen, uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things that all those other YouTubers are telling you to do. 
do that here, okay? You just, it's right down there on the bottom. All right, take care, everybody. See ya.